Something not talked about enough when speaking about the Nordic model is the prevalence of unionization and high regulatory standards for individuals in Nordic countries. What is the effect of this structure? Are there any drawbacks and are there any other characterizations of the labor market in Nordic countries which are advantageous or deserve a closer look? The Nordic labor force is heavily unionized. You can see from this graph that the overwhelming number of workers in Nordic countries are members of unions. In economics, unions are well accepted to have positive effects on wages and employment protections. Although there is a concern regarding a heavily unionized workforce and rigidity in the labor market, including with regards to its effects on immigrants. This might be best thought of intuitively. A union's job is to advocate for the current employee's rights and wages. This means that unions are not necessarily thinking with investors in mind, nor do they take into account market efficiency. Unions don't do this because that isn't their job. This advocacy means that unions often value tenure and seniority marginally more than the unimpeded labor market. Therefore, a newcomer with equal education will have a harder time entering an industry with heavy unionization. And of course, you're more likely to be fresh to a nation's industry if you're a newly arrived immigrant. Despite the Nordic countries containing a relatively high percentage of union membership, it appears the Nordic countries have done a good job mitigating these effects in their labor market given their unemployment rates across time. This is just to say that it is possible to capture the gains of union membership, which are robustly proven to be higher wages and better working standards while providing policy to mitigate the negatives, in this case potentially structural unemployment. Some policies to mitigate the labor market rigidity and union effects on immigration would be to couple marginal tax revenues with programs that subsidized the educations, trainings, and mobility of workers in society in order to maximize an individual's reach to obtain employment given a significant number of individuals can be locked out of employment based on geography or education. Another characteristic of the labor market in Nordic countries is the prevalence of worker board membership. Aside from Iceland, where I was unable to find information on, each Nordic country maintains regulations which give employees of companies, depending on the company's size, the right to elect board members. This means that corporate governing boards in Nordic countries may contain employee representation should the employees determine it necessary. I couldn't find great comprehensive data that incorporated Iceland especially, although I did find a study out of the Copenhagen Business School that found that amongst over 3,900 boards studied across Denmark, Finland, Norway and Sweden, 41% included employee elected boards, meaning a significant portion of employees do elect not to choose board representation, likely because they already have union membership representation or the company is small enough that it doesn't actually fall into the regulatory requirement of having workers on boards. I'll try to avoid repeating myself too much because my first video that I made, please forgive me it was my first video, was actually on worker representation on boards. But to summarize, worker board membership causes workers to be internally represented in the high level and ground level operations of a company, which results in employees having higher wages and better working conditions without sacrificing efficiency. It also allows employees to gain a more intrinsic understanding of their business and to hopefully value their work a little bit more because they do have some democratic input in what goes on in their company. It's also worth noting that companies with workers on boards typically experience less volatility in employment and are less likely to cut employment in general, leading to, in general, a more stable employment scheme for an economy. Nordic countries are often cited as counterexamples to things like business regulation and the minimum wage. None of the Nordic countries have a minimum wage, and all Nordic countries consistently rank highly regarding the ease of starting a business and access to both capital and credit. However, often these citations are missing the second part, which is how these countries organize their labor. These countries have reasonably determined that capitalist organization is advantageous for capital creation, innovation, and growth, but at the same time, regulation is necessary in order to protect workers given the potential perverse incentive regarding worker safety, wages, and working standards. Essentially, if your boss could work you for 24 hours a day, 7 days a week without feeding you or giving you any water, they absolutely would. However, absent government regulation, union organization, and worker involvement in decision making, society absolutely would have 12 hour working days, potentially child labor, and limited time off. I know this because these conditions existed absent the forms of exogenous influence I referenced earlier, mostly in the form of government regulation against the things that I referenced. Even when taking into account the high taxes Nordic people pay, these countries lead the world in terms of disposable income, and the unionization and strong collective worker representation makes a big difference in that regard. When it comes to union membership, worker board representation, or even democracy in the workplace, it's important to recognize that there are absolutely benefits to these things, but these benefits are not without drawbacks. Of course, as discussed in this video, worker board representation and unionization can create a higher cost of hiring and could potentially create structural unemployment. But if there are ways to capture partially the gains of higher wages and more working standards for your employees in order to to mitigate the potential losses and creation of structural unemployment, then it would be advantageous to do so.